Okay, um, so I'm just testing a bunch of different camera and microphone stuff. Um, and I'm going to try and do this while I um, while I paint something and see if I can get to a place where I've got a sustainable, uh, easy capture upload uh, system. Um, I should be able to switch between a couple of different cameras. Um, so I'm just messing around working on a test uh, figure for um, a White Scars bike um, and I've got a mobile camera and I'm just going to, yeah, I need to be able to do this comfortably, I need you to be able to hear what I'm doing, um, I need you to be able to see what I'm doing um, and I'll have a play with all of that and see if I can make that work. So this, <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever end up uploading this video or if this is just for me, um, but I'll be leaning in and moving and I'm going to move out of camera and so you have to bear with me while I, I mess about. But I'm just going to kind of get comfortable to paint and um, see what I can manage with you still able to see what I'm doing. Um, so far for the record this has been airbrushed with... Surface primer and uh, that's a light grey. I then hit it with uh, a white as well, just so I got a little graduation. Um, after that, uh, I hit it with uh, a black wash. I used Secret Weapon Soft Body Black uh, without shaking it. It's a tip that was on. Um, from the warp a long time ago, um, they discovered that it was uh, very thickly pigmented. Um, but if you uh, if you didn't shake it, it was more like an ink than a suspension of pigment, and it worked better. And I kind of agree there, um, although it is still quite heavy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go back in with a white, and I'm using uh, Reaper Master. It covers well. Um, and I'm going to use that just to make some kind of smooth areas up to uh, the uh, edges that I'm going to keep. And let's see if you know I can. So I just put some out on my palette, which is just a tile. And I'm going to move and see if I can get comfortable, and you can see what I'm doing. So. This is fairly comfortable for me, but you can't see that miniature at all. You can see my head just about. So if I pinch that down and do that, not enough head room. Really. So yeah, okay. Um, this, I guess, needs to be kind of there. If I clamp that in something. Yeah, I might need a clamp for that. Uh, it's going to take a few coats to get the coverage here. Actually, it's a little thinner. It's going to take even more coats to get coverage. But the, uh, the goal for these guys is not to have them squeaky clean. The goal is to have them look like they uh, do a job of work. I'm blending, blending. I'm just painting back away from the line, so I don't know if you can see on the model as painted. Let the camera sort itself out. Um, there's this little tide mark from the wash, but 
there's this lovely uh, line in the recess. So what I want is I want the tide mark to go away, but I want to keep the paint in the recess. So I I take the paint on a brush that's loaded just so that I get that kind of result. And I start just before the mark I want to keep and I paint back and away from it. I don't know if you can see that it, it reduces it. And that's what I mean by it's going to take a couple of layers because it'll take me a couple of times of doing that to lay down enough pigment to have that fade away. Now that's the way I want it. If I do it in any kind of heavier or thicker way than that, I will create another line. I'll create a, a line of white here up against it and you end up with too stark a, a transition. What you want is a nice fade. Hello, cat. <laughs> He's just going to settle there. He does that. Say hello. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that all around the miniature. Um, he's come because he likes to hear my voice. Some areas of this model are going to take more paint than others. And ultimately I might need a different technique for painting these guys because there's going to be about 20 of these guys to paint. And I'm starting to realise that doing it like this is going to take a while. There's a, I mean, there's a messier technique. I could just dry brush this. Um, will lose um, some control if I do that. And there may be places where the bristles uh, actually overbrush onto those black lines that I want to keep. Um, so I think I need some kind of compromise between the two, which I think is just going to mean um, not thinning this paint as much as I, my instincts tell me I should. Um, so that I can overpaint a little more heavily these tie marks. Because as it is, these are going to take a while to go. Hey, if white was easy, we'd all do it. <laughs> Sorry. I suppose what I should have said is if white was easy, you wouldn't be watching this video. Um, certainly not with these production values. But my thinking behind this video is that um, obviously it takes time to write blog posts. I've got a new job, I'm going to have less time. Um, I'm still going to want to blog, and I'm definitely still going to want to paint and model. Um, and if the blogging takes no additional time over the painting and modelling, that's a win because I'm not. It means I'm not going to be sat here thinking, "Oh, I really want to write a blog post, but I haven't done much modelling this week, and I'd like to spend some time doing that." Um, you know. So if I've got it set up, oh, the cat's on the mic. Uh, if I've got it set up so that I can um, paint and model, capture it, and upload it, even if it's just. Um, like a little tip about how to get that white away from the edge. Um, you can see it's kind of diminishing. So this is maybe Coke 4. And on Coke 4, pretty much gone. If you can 
can see that now. So we're just down to the white, yeah, white under a bright light on a webcam. <laughs> Not the best idea. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I just thought if I can um, capture what I'm doing like this, talk to you, and then hit blog, and I'll just upload it to YouTube and share it or whatever, then there's an increased chance of content hitting the blog um, as well as me getting some painting and modelling done. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about because I'm going to have a little bit of time at the weekends where I'm going to be able to do this is maybe um, not live streaming it but maybe a Google Hangout so if anybody else out there is also doing a bit of weekend hobby and paint. We can all stick on our cameras and we can talk to each other. Um, now I've never used a Google Hangout so I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea and I've never, uh, well I don't know if anybody's interested, I don't know if anybody's interested in sitting on a webcam with me and nattering while we paint. Um, but I'm going to throw it out there. So when I upload this, if I upload this, um, I'll ask that question. So I'm just blending away, smoothing out that white. And in some of these areas, I'm working it into the corners. What I mean is, um, I'm making the white brighter at the top of the panels. So I'm painting towards the top, so I'm kind of leaving more paint at the top. Um, I'll show you here. So, I'm painting from just below that line up to the top of the panel. isn't very smooth that's yet <laughs> that's why it's a test fig it's tricky to get white to go on smooth actually that's not true it's tricky to get any paint to go on smooth um, but white presents two unique difficulties um, the first is that because it's um, essentially colour neutral and a lot of the time it's quite a transparent paint, it's quite thin. Um, so because of those things it lets the paint underneath influence it far more than any other colour. Um, and the other thing is that because it is essentially the lightest colour. Yeah, every shadow is more visible. So the unevenness of the paint application is more visible because the shadows that every little bump, visible brush stroke and the lump cause are more visible as well. So you have to put more layers on for coverage and each captured kind of lump, bump and hair trapped in the thing um, make it far far more uh, are far more visible let's have a look at this guy now try a rougher technique with him. Some 
very kind of wet oil brush. Um, looking at just some of the raised surfaces as well. I might leave some of that grey in some of the recesses. Uh, more than just the line. So this kind of wet overbrush is going to look a bit rough, but I figure if I start with this, I might be able to smooth it out afterwards. It's actually not looking too bad. So when I'm doing this, if there's a, a recess I definitely want to keep, I make sure to brush across it. So like here, I know I want to keep uh, these black lines in the shoulder pad, so I brush across. Not alongside. brush is too wet, I will lose some of that. Loath to call it detail, <laughs> some of that paintwork, let's call it paintwork. And then we have this constant dilemma, I do anyway, in army painting. Whereas I want my armies to look good, but I also want them to be finished. And it's the old, uh, I don't know if it was him, but the quote that's attributed to Henry Ford. Um, fast, cheap and high quality, pick two. Um, <laughs> so you can have it fast and high quality, but it won't be cheap. You can have it cheap and fast. It won't be high quality. You can have it high quality and cheap, but it won't be fast. I like that. I think that's great. So it's quite rough at the moment. Can see that, but I'll uh, I'll come back and do some more and uh, smooth that white out and then show you what that looks like.